Yes, I was instructed not, not to start too quickly because there is a concomitant lecture by Senu David. And so he asked me to, to wait a little in, in case some student of his lecture would come would come here. So, um, so the, the other day there was a there was a question about locally constant function, uh, the gamma being a locally constant function. Uh, so I don't know if the, the person who asked the, the question is online, but yeah, uh, I, I can answer this uh, whenever you want. So yes, indeed, there is a locally uh, a constant function because uh, in the Galois case, uh, there was, so the assumption is that there is an isomorphism uh, between S double prime, so which is S prime over S prime. And so there is a map in that direction, which is just this one, sending S prime gamma to S prime, S prime gamma. But so this is just a, a notation to, so this is just a, a disjunct sum of copies of S prime gamma. So this is a, so each copy of S prime. And, and so, so this, this, this means indeed, hence uh, there exists a locally uh, constant uh, function uh, better because this defines a locally constant function uh, which stands any two points uh, to, to the gamma uh, because we have this isomorphism, any any pair of points, so they live in this uh, union, disjunct union of copies of S prime indexed by gamma. So so the point lies on 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 some of this component, and so you know, every point defined uniquely a, a gamma, and so there there is indeed a, a locally co constant function. And actually, uh, we can also we can consider the constant uh, group scheme gamma s. Uh, and, and so, uh, and, re, uh, and we write the above isomorphism. Uh, and this is, Hence, uh, S prime is uh, gamma S also over S. Okay, so it's not absolutely necessary to introduce the constant group scheme gamma S, but we may do it. We may do that if we like. And then the property of being a Galois cover just means that's a S prime is a is a is a torso over S with respect to this S group scheme, and so this is in connection with the, the remark about uh, locally constant uh, uh, functions. Uh, okay, so I have I have uh, recalled this lemma, and uh, which is important. Uh, and uh, let me also recall the, the fundamental theorem. Not theorem. 8.18, um, which says that if we have a morphism, uh, which is faithfully flat and Quasi compact. 
uh, then P is a morphism of effective descent for the category of a fine schemes of S prime and on with a decent data and even with a little more work for the category of quasi affine scheme of a S prime. Fine. Okay, so I will just give, give a sketch of the proof. I will just give a sketch of proof of just to illustrate use of the lemma 8.15. Okay. Uh, so a sketch of proof. So the first step in the proof is to say that firstly, we um, firstly assume the theorem proved when the base scheme S is affine. So we will prove this at the end, but assume that it is proved when S is affine, and then let's prove it in general. So in general, take, how do I want to call it? Let's take a, a covering, covering of S by a fine open subsets. And let us denote by T the disjunct union of, of this. So let us denote by T the disjunct sum of these UIs. So this goes to S and we we have seen previously that uh, for, so this is a morphism of effective descent, as, as we saw the, the other day, because basically a scheme over this is a uh, well there are schemes. Uh, so, so the de the descent data means that the scheme over each uh, UI glue together uh, and give a scheme over S. Uh, so the, the risky coverings are morphism of effective descent. And here we have our morphism, the given morphism P. And so we can form the, uh, the fiber product. And here we have the, uh, the, the morphism which is obtained by base change. So let's call it PT. And uh, now the, the, U, the, the UIs are uh, fine. So by by so this is this is a morphism of effective descent by hypothesis. Okay, so we we assume that the, this is this is proved in the, the affine case. So the the UIs are fine. And, and so this morphism is of effective descent. And by the second point, so is the composite. And then by, uh, no, by the first point, so is the composite. And then by the second point, this one is uh, a morphism of effective descent. Okay, so the, the reduction to the, to the to an, a fine base follow from from this lemma. Okay, so from now on, so now assume uh, S affine. 
by, by assumption, phi is quasi compact. And hence, S prime is quasi compact because uh, the inverse image by a quasi compact morphism of anything quasi compact is quasi compact. And now S is a fine and quasi compact. So this one is quasi compact. And S prime ca can be. Uh, is a, is a, can be written, is covered by a finite number. So it's important, it's here a finite number of a fine open uh, you pray more, you know. And uh, and um, and so the now the the disjunct union is a fine because it's it's its ring is just the product of the ring of the of, of the different pieces and uh, And now we are going to use uh, the lemma again. So we have so obviously so and 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 obviously so there is a map from uh, S one to uh, S prime because uh, so we have this map here and here this is uh, the given one and now we have, we have this map. Uh, let's call it P1. Uh, and, and so now this one is a fine. This one is a fine also. And so this, this map is flat. Uh, so because it, so this is a so this one is a is obtained from open immersion, so this one is flat, P is flat, so this one is flat, so this one also is subjective, so this one is flat and subjective, so it is actually flat. And uh, and so we see, so again, again by the second part of the lemma, it suffices <coughs> uh, to prove the theorem for the map S1 to S. Because, uh, so if, if this one is a morphism of effective descent, uh, so will be this one. So we are, we are reduced to the case where both schemes are fine. Uh, so, we are, so we are reduced so we are uh, reduce uh, to prove uh, that uh, if we have a, a map of ring which is faithfully flat, uh, then the corresponding map from S prime equals spec of A prime to S equals spec A is a morphism of effective descent. Okay. And this follows. Uh, from the proposition so in in the category of a prime module every 
uh, decent that um, is effective. That is, if M prime is an A prime module with an isomorphism phi from M prime tensor A prime over so the, the so let and so so this is what I call a double prime one, and I underline this factor to mean that uh, the the tensor product is is made with respect to the algebra morphism that says a prime into the the first factor, and so if we have an isomorphism. with the other guy uh, satisfying the co-cycle a condition. Uh, then M prime actually descend. Then M prime is equal to some module M tensor extended to a prime where M is a set of those elements M in M prime uh, such that, uh, so we can consider the element M tensor one in this uh, tensor product and take its phi and we so if we look at, at those elements, which, which is a sort of invariance element, if we if we think of the decent data as some group action, so this is the analog of the, of the invariance element and, and we have this result. Okay, so uh, I will not give the proof, but so this is a, a classical result uh, that can be found in, in many places. So for example, this is in SGA1. Uh, but it is also in a, say for example, in a book by uh, Waterhouse. So there is a, a book by uh, Waterhouse about uh, a fine a fine group scheme. And he has a section on, on descent theory uh, where how this result is proved. Okay, so so this is the, the essence of uh, FPQC descent. So it works for a fine schemes. And with some more work, this can be extended to uh, quasi-affine, uh, to schemes which are quasi-affine over S prime. Um, okay. Uh, so I, I want to give, to give a, so I want to give another criterion. So let's say we are en route towards a second uh, criterion uh, of uh, descent. Uh, so we start with the definition. So let's so suppose we have an equivalence relation on a on a scheme uh, x, and let's say this is over s, uh, so it's uh, everything is over our our base scheme s. So I I, I explained the other day that this uh, so this means that for in any t points. R of t is a graph of an equivalence relation on, on x of t. Uh, but it also induces, it induces an equivalent uh, relation on the topological space uh, 
space X, the just the, the set of uh, the topological space underlining the scheme, so the, the set of points uh, given by uh, one says that two points are equivalent if or if and only if there exists a point Z in R uh, such that. Uh, uh, Q1 of Z is equal X1 and Q2 of Z is X2. Okay, so so here I assume that R is a scheme and not 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 not, not just a subfunctor of X X cross six, but it's a subscheme of X cross six. So I can speak of points of well the topological points of R. So one sees that this is an, an well. This is an equivalence uh, uh, relation. And uh, the definition is that one says a subset V of X is uh, saturated uh, well if it is stable. By this equivalence, equivalence relations, and so using the definition, so one sees one sees that this is equivalent to say that v is equal to uh, so well if we take its image inverse image by by one of the projection and then project back. Uh, and, um, um, and also, so this set is also the same as this one. Um, okay, because uh, uh, precisely the well the, the the set of element x2 which are equivalent to to an element x1 in in v well it's just you, you take the inverse image and, and you project on the other side and similar and and so also and so actually these two subsets which are equal so this is a smallest sub saturated subset containing v and so one says that V is saturated if it is equal to, to that one. Uh, okay, so uh, now I want to write a couple of lemmas that will lead to the to the next decent criterion. So I will there are three of them, and I will try to, to write all three on, on that part of the board. So Eight point twenty one. So let's be on S prime to P face fully flat and quasi compact. Uh, let X prime uh, an object of S prime with a descent data and assume uh, X prime is covered by uh, saturated open subsets on which Uh, by open subsets, uh, let's call it uh, V prime I, on which uh, the descent datum is effective. Then X prime itself descends. Okay, 
And the second lemma that we will need, lemma, eight twenty-two. Uh, so now let's let me call it F. S point to S be faithfully flat and locally of finite uh, presentation. Uh, then F induces uh, uh, a diagram like this. So there is some S1 going into S prime. And so this is the given F. And so here we have F1 uh, with uh, S1 affine. Uh, um, with S1 affine, ah. So here I assume that, I assume that S, I assume that the base here is affine and that the morphism is phase three flat and uh, locally a finite presentation. So we have a map here with S1 affine and F1 a faithfully flat and of finite presentation. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, second lemma that uh, we will prove in, uh, in one moment. And let me state now the, the distant criterion that I have in mind. And so this is position eight twenty three. So let S prime to S be uh, faithfully uh, flat and locally of finite presentation and let's consider a scheme x prime, x prime over uh, s prime be uh, separated locally of finite presentation and locally uh, quasi-finite. So this is the hypothesis that I'm going to, to use, but in fact, the application we have in mind is, is the case for the morphismus is actually etal. Uh, okay, so if it is et al, it has all these properties of being uh, separated locally of finite presentation and, and locally quasi-finite. And, and then the conclusion is that then every uh, descent datum on X, on X prime, Reactive to S prime to S is effective. Okay. So we are going to to use this this criterion for for the for for the etal maps. Of the one I, uh, we mentioned another day of this uh, infinite curve of a nodal curve. So the map is a tile. 
but it is not quasi compact. Uh, but it descends thanks to this proposition. Okay, other questions on, on the statement before I give a few words about the proofs? No? Okay, so uh, now proofs. So just to save time, uh, well, so, so the proofs are in the notes, so, but well, let's say the first one is rather standard. So well, we, we have a no, we have a, the risky open covering uh, while the things, things descend and they glue on the base. And so, so this is not, not, not very interesting. So let's prove as the second one. Uh, so we make a, a first reduction, so as in proof of the main CRM 8.18, we can reduce to the case where the, the base is fine. Um, hmm? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes. So I was, yeah, I, I was thinking over the, over the, I was thinking about the, okay, thank you. So this, this I keep for the, for the proposition. Uh, so the proof is just so we take let S prime I be a covering by a fine open subsets. Uh, so the so the the assumptions on F imply that F is an open map with a, a faithfully flat uh, map uh, locally of, of finite presentation is open, which is is not the, the case for a general FPQC map. Uh, and and the, the images uh, is an open covering of S, which is a fine and quasi compact. Uh, so S is covered uh, by a finite number of them. Uh, okay, so say, uh, so I ranges from one to N, and then we can just take S1, which is uh, the disjoint sum of, uh, of the S prime I. So this one is a sign. and the map uh, to S uh, is flat and subjective. Uh, okay, and since the map is locally a finite presentation, so each of these open, or oh, each of these op a fine open is a finite presentation of S, and so, so is this one. Okay, so here we just use the, the, the openness of the map to, to reduce to, to this case. And now uh, let's prove a proposition 
Okay. So here as in proof of the CRM. So we can reduce to the case why S is a fine. And then, by the previous lemma, we can also assume we can also assume that uh, S prime is uh, a fine just by by replacing it by uh, uh, by this uh, this one. Okay, so we have this uh, x prime, which is over s prime. And s prime is over over s, and we would like to to prove that the x prime comes from from something. And so the assume first. Assume first. X prime is quasi compact. Uh, then we are done because then the morphism X prime to S prime is well uh, separated by hypothesis. Uh, uh, a finite presentation because it's coming uh, and uh, quasi finite. Uh, hence, so this is a, a non trivial result, hence, it is quasi affine. Okay, so this is a so this is a, some things that ca one can find, for example, in EGA. Uh, well, it's a, well, so it, it's a, it's a deep result that uh, such a morphic is is a quasi affine. Uh, an ends uh, descent is effective by the theorem. Okay, so th that was uh, the, the easy case. Now the general case, uh, general case. So we, we just say that X prime is, co yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 no, well, uh, quasi-finite means finite presentation and, and the fibers are finite. Are finite. So uh, yeah, finite, uh, no, finite type, finite type is, is embodied in the definition. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. No, no, uh, quasi-finite means a, a finite type and each fiber is a, uh, is a finite set. Hmm? No, 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 because it has to be of a finite type. Uh, and presumably under the, the assumption of finite uh, type, if the fibers are discrete, uh, presumably they, they, are, they are finite. Okay. Well, so the, the, the general case, is we just say that X is covered by uh, a fine uh, open uh, subsets. Uh, U prime 
and uh, and look at the uh, saturation. So we have these two. So we have these two maps. Um, um, no. So here we have these two maps from uh, X prime cross over S prime, S double prime, and uh, Um, and let's look at it saturation is let's call it v prime so it's the inverse Im it's a projection from the inverse image okay um, and uh here are our two maps, uh, both uh, are obtained, both are pullbacks. Of the two maps. So this is S prime cross S prime. And uh, And okay, so since the morphism P from S prime to S is so what is the hypothesis here? Is uh, phase poly flats and uh, a finite presentation? Okay, so recall that uh, we are reduced to the case where S and S prime are affine. And so the, the morphism is a, a finite presentation. <laughs> Uh, so uh, Q1 and Q2, and so both are open. Uh, both are open maps. Also, uh, they are a fine uh, since uh, S prime is a fine. Okay, so this implies so when we take this in inverse image of a uh, few prime, uh, so it is open because well with. It's the inverse image of an open. It's a fine to be words. The map is a fine, a new prime is a, a fine. Um, in particular, in particular, it is quasi compact. And V is the projection. So is open. Now because Q2 is, is open and quasi compact as the image of a quasi-compact one. Uh, OK. And hence, x prime is covered by uh, quasi-compact uh, saturated 
open subsets and on which uh, the some datum effective uh, by the first step. Okay, so the first step is that if X prime is quasi compact, the map is quasi affine and hence the descent that term is, is effective. And then it, it's, it's covered and hence it is effective. It's effective on X prime. Okay, so, uh, so, the, so this works. And uh, so, um, okay, so let, let us try to, to illustrate this uh, in uh, one case. Um, so, so let's move to the next section, uh, which is representability. Oh. Um, of the dual group when G is as a twisted constant or uh, of multiplicative type. Okay, so, uh, uh, so uh, recall, so if G is uh, S group scheme, so as a, of the form E, which is twisted constant or H, which is of multiplicative type, then D of G is a functor uh, that sends any uh, S scheme T. So this is uh, the morphism of T group schemes uh, from uh, GT into GMT. Okay, so this is uh, the definition of, uh, uh, so this defines D of G as a functor and I, I want, uh, I, I, I said previously that uh, this functor is, is claim D of G is representable. Okay. So, uh, more generally, uh, let X and Y be schemes uh, over S and consider the functor F, which we denote by um, underlined so this is the functor which sends any S scheme T to the sets of T schemes from XT to uh, YT. And so the claim is F is uh, well, okay, so let us study uh, whether 
uh, F is representable. Um, okay, so So let's do this in, in two steps. Okay, so first, um, let um, T uh, be uh, S scheme. Uh, let UI be uh, uh, the risky, will be a, a covering of T by open subsets. And let's denote by T prime the disjoint union of this. And by T double prime, Uh, this fiber product, which we see to be the disjoint union and, and so this is isomorphic to the intersection you are intersected with your j. Okay, so we have the following uh, lemma. Uh, for our F that, we, that I, I just uh, defined, uh, we have an exact diagram uh, that F of T Which means, uh, as usual, that uh, the first map is injective, and its image is a set of elements V, uh, which have the same images in that one by the two projections. But uh, so this simply says that a morphism of scheme can be defined locally, uh, uh, because so this is a set of morphism from x t to y t. And so this is a product of, of such morphism over the, defined over the open subset uh, UI. And the, the, the and here's the, so the, these are the two restriction map to the intersections. And, and so this just says that we are considering morphism uh, defined on, on the various open subset which coincide on the intersection. So they define a uh, so they glue the morphism glue together and, and define a morphism uh, okay, uh, on the whole of our, of our scheme over T. So this is okay. And so we call this nice property. So we say uh, uh, a functor. So we say that such a functor. That is a functor uh, such that for any cover, for any the risky covering of the base, uh, this sequence is exact. So we say such a functor is a local functor. So one say equivalently, equivalently local functor, or we also say that it is a sheaf for the risky topology.
Okay, so this so these two these two terms are, are synonymous. Okay, no. Okay, and and so now consider uh, a, a more restrictive class of functors definition. So uh, so all functors we we I, uh, we speak about are contravariants. So a contravariant functor f from the category of schemes to the category of sets is called an FPQC shift if f is local and so let's call this let's call this diagram star and star is exact for any um, morphism uh, t prime to t which is faithfully flat and quasi compact. Okay, so we we are, so we want this to be true not only for for the risky covering, but also for for faithfully flat quasi compact maps. And then we have the proposition that our f is FPQC a shift, and actually we have seen this already. A scene already. So uh, basically, this is equivalent uh, because uh, any gracefully flat quasi compact morphism is universal effective epimorphism. Uh, okay, because so th there is some change of, of point of view here. Uh, because here I can see I fix x and y, and I, I consider this as a functor of t. But I claim that this is a functor that is that for any map which is faithfully flat and quasi-compact. Uh, I want this diagram to be exact for any x and y. And as I explained in a previous lecture, this, this, ex this, this exactly means that uh, this map is a, is a universal effective epimorphism. Because first we base change to x, to xt, and then it is still effective an effective epimorphism, and then we, when we take the homes into yt, as this gives that this diagram is exact. Okay, so so these home functors are all those sheaves uh, for the FPQC topology. And again, FPQC topology is just a word. I, I, I could say uh, banana FPQC if I wanted. Uh, so, so there is no need to, to construct the topology at, at, at this point. So this is just a, a property. And, but so this is already good enough to prove uh, the, the representability we want. Uh, because now we have the following proposition that will prove our what we want. So let F uh, be uh, FPQC chief uh, and assume uh, on on the category of schemes of a, a fixed base S and assume 
uh, there exists uh, faithfully flat quasi compact map S prime to S uh, such that the base change of F to S prime is uh, representable by uh, S prime scheme uh, S prime. Um, then uh, X prime is endowed with a descent baton. relative to S prime to S. And secondly, if effective, uh, that is if X prime comes from an object X over S, then X represents F itself. Okay, so the the representability of a functor uh, uh, can be descended if the descent uh, that term is uh, is effective. Okay, so. And well, so here we are going to use that uh, our shift is the FPQC. And so, uh, as you will see, the, the proof is, uh, is, uh, is completely formal uh, proof. So let's. As uh, in another lecture, so so this uh, this is uh, okay. So the, the index, uh, so this is uh, well the double fiber product and the triple one, and the index just indicates uh, which factor projects onto into S prime, and uh, so the hypothesis is that uh, F prime, that is a functor restricted to the category of S prime scheme is represented by X prime. Hence, if I consider F prime tensor of S prime, the sum prime is represented by X prime tensor X prime and similarly is represented by Okay, but now both this, because F itself, it comes from a, a functor F of S. So both are actually equal to F cross, the, both are actually equal to this fiber product, which doesn't need to specify S1 or S2. Uh, so, so these two objects represent the same functor and ends by uh, Yoneda lemma, uh, there exists a unique isomorphism uh, phi by uh, Yoneda lemma because they, they represent the same uh, functor. And, uh, and 
so uh, then the, the cost cycle condition is also satisfied. So recall that the, this means x prime tends of s prime of this one. And so we have the inverse image of this isomorphism going to this one and here to x3. And so this is this inverse image. And here this is And uh, the fact is that all three uh, represent uh, the functor f cross s uh, ends. They are uniquely isomorphic. So by, by Yonela Lemma, there is a unique isomorphism and actually we have we have two isomorphisms and, and so the diagram commutes. Hence this commutes. Okay, so we so we get the the descent uh, we get the descent datum for, for three. And so assume that the descent is effective and uh, Assume uh, effective and uh, there exists a unique uh, S scheme X such that this is X prime. And we only have to prove prove x represents f so this is not difficult but well there is still some some trick so firstly for any for any object which is already above uh, s prime uh, one has uh, so f of y, so this is uh, the same as f prime of y because f prime is just uh, the restriction of f to the category of uh, s prime scheme. And so this is what is this? So this is from uh, S prime from Y and F prime is represented by X cross S S prime. And so this is from S of X, Y. So this is, uh, so this is uh, the case where Y is already above S prime. Now let Y be over S then y prime is equal to, so this one is over s prime. Uh, and uh, so we, now we have, uh, since f is a fpqc shift, so this diagram is exact. So this is exact since f is fpqc by hypothesis. And here we have from s of uh, y prime into x. From s of y diagram prime into x and from S 
of x and to y. And these two are uh, canonically equal. And uh, so the bottom row is also exact because we have seen previously that from x, y, this functor is SPQC. Okay, so, and so these two are equal uh, by the FPQC property. Okay, so uh, we have proved our, our proposition. Uh, so that if, if a functor is uh, uh, locally representable for the FPQC topology, if the descent datum is effective, then then, then the descended object uh, represents F. And so let, let us apply this to, to our two cases. So there was proposition 4.4 in a previous lecture, which is that if E over S is twisted constant. Then D of uh, D of E is representable by H by a group of multiplicative type H. Well, indeed, by hypothesis, uh, there exists a morphism like that, uh, well, faithfully flat. Okay, so, so as usual, we can assume S to be a fine. And uh, then there exists S prime to S, it's fully flat, quasi compact, such that E S prime is, is a constant, is a constant dot scheme. So here M is a finitely generated abelian group. Uh, okay. And then hence, our functor D of ES, which is D of ES, which is D of M prime S uh, is represented by X prime, which is just a diagonalizable group S prime. And uh, this one is a fine over S prime, hence. Uh, the descent datum that we obtain by the proposition is effective. Is effective. And hence, uh, D of O itself is represented by a S group scheme. H such that H base change to S is D of MS prime, which tells that H is indeed of multiplicative type. Okay, so we could make the descent in this case because the, the represented object is, is, was a fine, okay? And now to the second case, and this is where you are, we are going to use proposition 823.
So the second case is prop position 4.5. So if H to S is multiplicative type group, but here we have to add this hypothesis that it is quasi isotrivial because we uh, then D of H is represented by a twisted constant group E. Okay, so again, we can assume S affine. Okay, so I, I, I remind you that whenever I say we can assume S affine, so, so um, I'm again using this uh, lemma 8.15 from the beginning. Uh, we take a Zariski cover and descent is effective through this uh, the, uh, through this cover, so it suffices to to do the thing of uh, uh, the uh, over the often open often a fine opens that co that cover us. Okay, so so. So in the book, this, it's, it's always written like that. Uh, yes, well, say it's obvious we can reduce to this thing, but the reason we can reduce is precisely the, the lemma I, I, I wrote previously. And by this hypothesis that it was the isotrivial, then there exists S prime to S et al. Not necessarily quasi compact. But et al. Uh, such that uh, H lifted to S prime is diagonalizable. Hence, if we consider this functor D of H lifted to S prime, uh, so this is a dual of HS prime, and uh, so this is this thing. And, okay, so, that, so this one is represented by the scheme MS prime, which is et al over S prime, and uh, by a23 uh, descent uh, is effective. Okay, because here our base change is et al. Uh, yeah, I forgot to say et al and subjective. Okay, so it's uh, et al, uh, so it is flat subjective and faithfully flat, locally a finite presentation because it is et al. And x prime is et al over s prime. And so the descent is effective. And so we are done. Okay. And so let us illustrate this. Let us come back to the, oh. Mm, let me think. No, uh, I want to. Uh, I, I wanted to talk about the the example of the nodal curve, but I, I prefer to prove a theorem, and we, we we can come back to the to the nodal curve uh, later. Uh, So let's prove the CRM. Ah. No. Mm. Uh. Okay, see, well, so the, the aim is to prove this. 
so the goal. Uh, so I, I will not, we will not reach it today, but uh, well, we will make step towards it. Is to prove the following theorem. That uh, suppose S, the base scheme is locally not union. And geomet geometrically uh, unibranch. And, and so this means that if we look at the normalization map, oh, we can take, we, we, we look first, we take first the reduced scheme associated. And so it is locally notarian, so it, it admits a normalization. So there is, uh, and so the, the requirement uh, is that this, this map is radical, which means uh, bijective and uh, the extensions of the residual fields are, are all uh, radical. Okay. Uh, then any uh, quasi isotrivial multiplicative group of multiplicative type over S is automatically quasi, is automatically isotrivial. And so there is no, no example, no such example as uh, the example we had uh, for the nodal curve where we could, well, we we had a we had a principal z, z bundle over over the nodal curve who gave a group of multiplicative type which was quasi isotrivial but but not isotrivial so this cannot exist over a base which is a geometrically unibranch in particular over a locally notarian a normal base um, okay so I, I will just try to state and prove the main lemma. And so we will finish the proof uh, tomorrow. Okay, so the, the key lemma is the following uh, lemma, which is 11.2. Um, so assume S locally uh, material and let P over S be quasi. isotrivial uh, constant uh, scheme. And let Z some open and closed subsets uh, of P. And firstly, uh, let U uh, be those points S in S uh, such that uh, the fiber Z over S is a finite set. then U is open and closed. And the map Z restricted to U over U is finite. 
And the obvious consequence is that if S is connected, if S is connected and Q is not empty, uh, then U equal S and Z to S is finite. Okay. So let's try to prove this. And so proof, so by assumption, there exists a map, there exists F from S prime to S, a subjective et al. Uh, such that P lifted to S prime is a constant, is a constant scheme, is a constant scheme uh, for some set I. And so now, so we so consider the, the diagram. So we have, we have P over S. We have this inverse image. So this is just uh, the direct, so this is just uh, the digital sum of copies of uh, S prime. And here we have this Z, which is open and closed. And we have this Z prime, which is also open and closed. Okay. And so, so this is F. And so the first observation is that the inverse image of U, let's call it U prime. So it's a set of those S prime and S prime, such that the fiber is finite. Okay, because so the, the fiber, this is just the fiber over S, tensor over the residue field of this. And so this is a finite set, and the map is et al. So each of these extension is a finite extension of field, more of a separable. So so this is a Altogether, this is a finite set. So the inverse image is a similar set uh, here. Uh, uh, and since F is et al, and S is a lot only uh, Noetherian, so this implies that S prime is also locally material and adds it's, its connected uh, components are uh, open and closed. Okay, so let's, let's see be one of them. Uh, okay, so we, we take a connected component inside this one. And so the inverse image, so this is just uh, this, but now since this one is connected, then each CI is a connected component here. And uh, so we have Z, so we have Z, which is inside this one, and it is open and closed. And so this means that the, there exists a subset J, depending on C, such that Z over C is a disjunct union for I in J of C of the CI. And, and so we see that uh, uh, a point F or so, and so we have uh, a point, any S prime in C 
uh, is in uh, U prime if and only if G of C is finite. And so we see that actually, uh, so U prime is the, is, the, is the union of all connected components C such that G of C finite. Okay, so you, uh, and so this one is open and closed. And moreover, we see that Z U prime to U prime, uh, this map is finite because over each comp connected component, uh, the map is finite. And now we are done because uh, F is et al, hence uh, open. And so U, which is F of U prime, is open and closed. So it's, it's open and uh, its complement is also the image of an open, so it's open. And, uh, and, and uh, since This one, so this is a pullback diagram and the map here is finite. Uh, this one is et al. And so this one is, uh, and so this one is, uh, is finite. It's finite too, so this is, uh, well, this is a, a property, uh, well, finiteness uh, descends by uh, uh, a maps which are, so what is the reference? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this is uh, the standard proposition that if in a pullback, uh, if, if this map is actually uh, FPQC or FPPF in particular et al. So if this one is finite, so is this one. Okay. Yeah. It's open because it's uh, it's it's flat and locally of presentation. So it is open, and but the complement is also open, and so 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 U is open and closed. And this map is finite, and so we have proved our our lemma, which which looks uh, rather innocent, but it's really the the key step uh, to prove this uh, this theorem of uh, isotriviality. So I think it's uh, a good point to stop here, and so we're, I will finish uh, this this topic um, on Friday, and yep. So on to, so yeah so tomorrow I will finish this topic, and I I, I wanted to talk about quotients, but uh, I will write lecture notes for caution, but this is standard material that that is easy to find. So I, I will rather start with the topic of uh, infinitesimal infinitesimal lifting of morphism. But if 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 you have a, a morphism of group scheme from a, a group of multiplicative type to a, to a smooth group, uh, which is defined on a, a, a subscheme defined by an important ideal, so with the same topological space, then actually it lifts it lifts to the whole space, and and so this, so there will be maybe two or three le lectures on this topic, and I think it's good to start to start on that uh, tomorrow. Okay, so we stop here. <laughs>